so prosper, you will prosper. In the name of Jesus. You say you are sick in your body. When you are doing the will of God, is it uh, Zachariah that was uh, barren? But will not stop doing God's work. In the course of doing the work of God, the blessing came. The blessing came. I heard of a lady, I don't know the lady, that had hunched back. And then, you know, I don't know why they call it hunchback alone, because uh, even the church is almost also protruding. And you know, people like that are always very short. But this lady will not allow the shame of her physical look to deter her from serving the Lord. I don't care what the life challenge may be. She will serve the Lord. And bless the Lord with your life. This lady joined the ushering team. Ushering team. What can be worse than that? To have points back. To have protruded shirts. There are people in the church that they will never listen to the pastor. What would they be concentrating on? never came. Don't worry about what people will say. But one day came. One day came. The GS was invited to a particular state. Revival weekend. Somebody here will be revived. And then he preached the word. And after that, you know the way he does his thing? It's time for miracle time for signs and wonders. And uh, all eyes closed, and all eyes were closed. But the ushers cannot close their eyes. Because that is when thieves in the church. We want to start picking. You know what I'm talking about. So you better keep your iPhone. And if you're only Samsung, So all just don't close their eyes. There is spirit agent in the house. And prayer was going on. Any swollen part of your body, go! And all of a sudden, the hunchback sitter realized something forcefully left her. Like somebody's struggle is going to be today. Like somebody's yoke is going to be broken today. Yeah. Like somebody's band is going to be destroyed today. Yeah. Like somebody's stagnation will be over today. Yeah. Like somebody's prosperity will come today. Yeah. And she noticed something left her. And it's like, and unconsciously, you no, know, it's when you have time to think that you think right. Um, she, she forgot she was an usher. She left the place, she ran to the bathroom. She told somebody, please, what happened to me? What happened to me? The trouble is over. He touched me. Oh, he touched me. And oh, that joy that floods my soul. Something happened, and now I know it touched me and made me oh. It touched me, it touched me. Oh, he touched me, and oh, that joy that floods my soul. Something happened, and now I know it 
touch me and make me new. While serving the Lord, while serving the Lord, the Lord will serve her. The Lord will serve you. She said, I'm jobless. The more reason why you should give yourself job in the Lord. She said, I'm sick. The more you should go minister to those that are sick. Minister to those that are sick. Was it yesterday I was sharing with some people? I think it was yesterday. Was it? Okay. There was a time I was sick myself. Amen. And I was on the floor. I couldn't go to work. I couldn't even sleep on the bed. And you know when you're a leader, you don't go to your member and say, I'm sick. You know what I'm talking about? Praise the Lord. And all of a sudden, there was a knock on my door. Boom, 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 boom. And that was one of the things that did. Well, I managed to call to get help. I got to the door. It was a sister with her baby dying, baby in her hand. She said, please help me. Help me. Will you remember you were sick at that time? And I was trying to hide my own feet. So I have to use style. Collected the baby from her. Amen. Every dead thing will come back to life. Amen. And then I said, I will get back to you. And I took the child and I prayed. And instantaneously the child was healed. Life came back. But honey, you were sick yourself. You have prayed yourself. And that's what I'm telling you. You are not the healer. Tell your neighbor, you are not the healer. Some preachers got mad when they pray and nothing happened. Because they want to show to people is their power, is their ability. You are a deceiver. I have no power of my own. I have no power of my own. Holy oh, Spirit, I am helping you to help me. I have no. Your job is to do the will of God. Obey. He's the one that will determine what to do, when to do it, how to do it. Are you listening to me? Once you have done your part, step aside. Don't try to make anything work by force. That's why some people are not adding other things. They tell you, go and bring handkerchief. Go and bring water. Go and bring oil. Go and bring candle. The Lord will help us. But if you must... Do this work, understand yourself, be precocious, you must be born again. There must be personal conversion. Personal conversion. Luke 6, 39, and he spake a parable unto them, can the blind lead the blind? Shall they not both fall into the ditch? The blind cannot lead the blind. So you need to understand, mere religion is not enough for you to do the work of God. I was born in the church and raised in the church for many years. Pastor Patrick said it before, I was a worker in the church. I was a minister in the church. I was ministering about Christ that I didn't know. I was talking to people about heaven that I was not prepared to go to. It was in 1985. I was invited for a meeting. And I said, oh, this will help me to be able to know more and uh, get better in how on, on preaching. I wanted to be able to preach better. Little did I know, did I know that God had planned my salvation for that day. You know, when it happened, the position, the title in that church, I gave up everything. I want to grow. Amen. That's how I finally ended up in this house. To God's glory. It's been a good journey so far. 
Amen. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot do what? See the kingdom of God. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have what? Everlasting life. So when you believe, genuinely believe it now, not religiously believing, you have eternal life. Number two, prerequisite is persuasive conviction. Paul in Romans 8, 38 said, For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angel, nor principality, nor power, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. Number three, prioritize commitment. You prioritize your commitment. Amen? If any man, you are married, you have children, you have issues, you have job. Luke 14, 26, if any man come to me and hate not his father and mother and wife and children and brethren and sisters, yea, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. Can it be worse than that? So, if you must be a blessing, you must give your life. Sow your life. And you will see the miracle happening in Jesus' name. Amen. Number four, persistent contribution. Persistent contribution, you contribute your time, your talent, and your treasure continuously. Continuously. Peter said in John chapter 13, verse 37, that, uh, let's read it. Peter said unto him, Lord, why cannot I follow thee? I will lay down my life for thee. I will lay down my life for thee. Many of us are not really doing God's will because we are not ready to lay down our life for him. Number five, uh, passionate contribution. Persistent and pa you do it with passion. Number six, programs that target souls. Don't just do programs. I do a lot of programs. If that program is not giving results, I change it, I do something else. I do something else. Number, what's the next number now? Number seven, you get partners of like passion. Who are your friends? Show me your friends and I will tell you who you are. If you want friends that you can just uh, wine together, dine together, and, uh, and do church or church together, you know, what the, you know the meaning of church or church? Huh? You don't know? Ask your neighbor, do you know the name of church or church? Okay, ask somebody, do, do you church or church? Ask somebody, do you church or church? If those are the kind of friends you are looking for, best are the same feather flocks together. But look for people. Talk with people. That are doing something good, meaningful, building the kingdom of God, impacting lives, destroying and dismantling the kingdom of darkness. Communicate with them, ask them questions. Ask them questions. And I can tell you, I'm never ashamed to ask anybody any questions. I'm never ashamed. Will help us. You need prayers of selfless nature. Prayer of selfless nature. What do I mean by that? You look at the trend during this convention. Anytime we are praying for ourselves, how was the prayer? It was Jim Jim. Jim Jim. But now let us say, okay, let us pray for souls. Oh God. Oh God. Oh God. But turn the prayer around and begin to say to people, every devil that follow you here, ha, this roof will go up. All the force and powers of darkness, 
prayer be prayers of selfless nature? A lot of you are looking for deliverance right now. You know the kind of deliverance you need? Deliverance to do the will of God. Deliverance to fulfill the purpose of God. Evangelism. Evangelism. What takes most of your prayer life? Where your treasure is, there will your eyes be. There will your heart be. There will your life be. And that's why our church are not growing. That's why we're not growing. I'm going to do something right now. This is not to shame you. You have a comfort you have brought to your location where you are by the grace of your heart. A comfort. You have a comfort. Thank God you are coming. But you, by God's grace, you have been able to reproduce yourself. Raise up your hand. Just look around. Look around. See the trouble we are having? I see one hand over there. Anyone here? I see one over here, making two. I see one over there, I see one over there, about four people. You see what we're talking about? But in the name of the Lord, things will change. Amen. Is that how you are going to say the amen? amen. I will bring Pastor Oni here to, to help me ask you if that's how, is that how to say amen? amen. Let me scream and shout on you. You see what we are talking about? It's not enough to, we have preached this again and again. What are we doing about it? That's a question. And that's why I don't want to just come and just download on you. I will share with you my own personal, the things I do myself. The things I do myself. So I'm not telling you to do things that I, I'm not doing. Every day I'm praying, Lord, give me soul. Every time I plan program for the purpose of soul. Every now and then I call meetings. You know, most of you, you do, you do workers meeting. Uh, Bible, uh, what do you do at the workers meeting? Building the body review. Search the scripture review. Uh, listen to message again. You pray, you go. Come back next week. Building the body review. Search the scripture review. Everything you pray. Is that workers meeting? While that is necessary, how much time do you devote to planning with your workers, with your leaders on soul winning? Church growth and, plan, uh, and church planting. Do you know church planting is an extension of this great commission we're talking about? That as you go winning the souls, you are planting the churches. After this convention 2019, things will change. In all our churches, new life in Jesus' name. Now, all of this cannot be done. Trust me. And this is going to be the final point under the prerequisite. All this cannot be done without the power of the Holy Ghost. The power of the Holy Ghost. Paul may plant, Apollo may water. Without God, there will, ne there will be no angel the Holy Ghost will help you. So, don't just go with the arm of the flesh, it will fail. Go in the power and the might of the Lord. Go listening to the prompting of the Spirit. And the Lord will help you in Jesus' name. And that leads me to the final point, power for evangelism. Luke 10, 19, Behold, I give unto you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall be any means hurt you. Mark chapter 16, verse 15, And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. Verse 17, Rise upon your feet. Rise upon your feet. Rise upon your feet. Don't close your Bible. We're going to read it together. 
I'm not done preaching. I'm not done preaching. I still have uh, maybe 30 more minutes before I release you. But I want you to stand up. Acts 16, 17, one to go. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And they drink any deadly thing, they shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sea, and they shall recover. So then, after the Lord has spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven and sat on the right hand of God. Verse 20, everybody, verse 20 now. And they went forth and preached everywhere, the Lord walking. Can you read that last verse again? And they. Amen. What are these signs that we follow? Number one, salvation of souls. Number two, sanctification of the saints. Number three, spirit filling of the sanctified vessel. Number four, supernatural miracles, signs, and wonders. Number six, stoppage of ungodliness in our society and surroundings. And then, stabilization of weary saints and their faith will be stabilized. And the Lord will do it in Jesus' name. And then there will be service opportunity, opportunity for ministry, for ministry. Because you have been a regular member sitting down there doing nothing. Now, God is opening the door. And then, the, and then maybe you are even working in the church. All you do is just say, cleaning the floor, serving the table. And the Lord says, Billy, the evangelist, come on board. You are a miracle worker. It will happen to somebody in Jesus' name. Amen. And then there will be divine security and protection. He said, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. When you do your part, God will give us the power Enough that the saints will be separated from sinners. And they, they will clear difference between saints and sinners in the world. And uh, God will be specially interested in you. Because the Bible says that when a soul is wise, that that means, before we pray, it's good to sing in the church. But singing in the church is nothing compared to When you sing, your singing is not, it's not for entertainment. It's good to clean the church. Thank God for those that clean the church. To do it too. I don't mean I used to do it. I mean I still do it. But that is nothing compared to so much. It's good to be an usher. Thank God for our usher family for so long. Nothing compared to so when he that women so. Tell the Lord I won't live here the way I came. I won't live here the way I came. The Lord is giving you and me another opportunity. And the more I speak to you, the more I say to myself, Lord, I cannot slow down. I must not slow down. Use me, Lord. Every weight. Weigh me down. Slow me down. Hinder me. Limit me. Oh, Lord, take them away from my life. Oh, Lord, 
if I must be a soul winner, my own soul must not be lost. Save my soul, O Lord. If you are here, you are not yet born again. How can the blind lead the blind? Visit me afresh, O Lord. If you were born again, but now you are backsliding. Oh Lord, restore me back. Give me back the joy of your salvation. The joy of your salvation, oh Lord. Every weakness of sin in me, oh Lord. Every nature of sin in me, oh God. Every conduct and character of sin in my life, oh Lord. I repent of them. I renounce them, oh Lord. I give myself and my life unto you. Now begin to declare, oh Lord, my life will not be in vain. I will not labor in vain. I will be a blessing to my generation. I will be a blessing to my generation. me? Who shall I send? The Lord is looking for laborers. Selfless laborers. Saved laborers. Sanctified laborers. Separated laborers, separated from the world of sin. Committed laborers, conscientious laborers. Oh Lord, use me. I surrender myself and my life unto you, oh Lord. If you are a pastor, you have only been concerned about growing that one church. How far have you grown? The apostles concentrated in Jerusalem until problem came. Decentralize that church. Give people the opportunity to minister. The church then will grow. The church will multiply. The anointing, the unction, and the power of God in the people will, be, will come to manifestation. Begin to pray for sinners in our churches. Many people come to church today, they are religious and not righteous. Pray a selfless prayer. That the kingdom of God will come. That the name of God will be glorified. That the death of Christ will not be in vain. something in our church. We are tired of this level, oh Lord. We need a breakthrough. 
We need progress in the walk. and powers of darkness hindering me from doing the will of God, the word of God. Oh Lord, take them away. yield myself to you, O Lord. I surrender my life to you, O God. Make me a soul winner. Give me souls or else I die. Give me children or else I die. Pray with passion. Pray with purpose. In Jesus' name we pray. I surrender. I surrender. All to be my blessed sin. I surrender all. I surrender all. I surrender 